Last week, Stability AI announced Stable Diffusion 3, which was their first big release of 2024. And today, just about a week later, they've released their research paper, which explains some of the basic approaches they've used to bake in some incredible groundbreaking features in Stable Diffusion 3. So can you run this on a 4090? What other GPUs can this actually run on? Did they actually manage to deliver something that competes with OpenAI's Sora? I'm going to get into all of this in this video. So welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. The raw paper is pretty heady. There is a lot of complex math, which I understand because I study computer science, but I think what you guys would find more interesting, maybe even more interesting than a hippo wrapped in a waffle, is actually the synopsis that Stability AI released. And I've read through the paper already, and I think their synopsis is quite good, especially when they compare what you can do with it on reasonable GPUs today. Basically, this is the research paper behind Stable Diffusion 3, but it doesn't tell you exactly how to do everything that it does. They've announced some of the novel methods they've developed. They've announced kind of their findings when it comes to what training decisions made the model better, which didn't quite deliver where they thought they would, and what things they combined that actually gave Stable Diffusion 3 its incredible capability given how much compute it actually uses. So what are they saying? So basically they're saying Stable Diffusion 3 outperforms state-of-the-art text-to-image generation systems such as Dolly 3, Midjourney V6, and Ideogram V1 in typography and prompt adherence based on human preference evaluations. And I think this terminology here is important because the reason Midjourney V6 is sometimes annoying to use, just in terms of how it makes something that, yes, abides by your prompt, but isn't really what you wanted when you get more specific, is because Midjourney V6 vastly prioritizes human preferences. So basically what it knows humans like to look at based on what people click through when they want to uh, look at an next iteration of an image. What I've always thought Stable Diffusion really excelled at was prompt adherence or being hyper specific with what you want and being able to tune very small portions of what you're working with, even before you get to things like in painting or out painting. They go on to say that our new multimodal diffusion transformer or MMDIT, uses separate sets of weights for image and language representations, which improves text understandings, spelling capabilities, when compared to previous versions of Stable Diffusion. And this I also think is cool, because text is something that's been kind of a underlying, kind of slow-burning improvement in this industry in generative AI. And I think it's cool to finally see a novel approach to this that seemingly has actually worked. And what's interesting is now Stable Diffusion 3 actually has dedicated typography encoders, and transformers, which I think is pretty interesting. And they say here that following our announcement of the early preview of Stable Diffusion 3 today, we are publishing the research paper, which outlines the technical details for, of our upcoming model release. The paper will be accessible on archive soon, and we invite you to sign up for the waitlist to participate in the early preview, which I'm already signed up. And if you haven't, I'll link below so you can do that. So let's look at performance. And win rate here is a curious thing to look at because basically it means uh, how close this model got or these models got to what the user actually wanted. So this chart here shows a performance across visual aesthetics prompt following and topography. And what's cool is to see that SD3 as a baseline clearly wins out a ba basically against all these models. So it pretty much it outlines the areas where it wins against competing models based on human evaluations of these three different areas. And I think it's cool to show really here how actually good Midjourney V6 is with topography and how far we've come with models like SDXL. And what's curious is it looks like these were all measured with humans and they let them kind of decide what they thought was best. Now, the really interesting tidbits, and I'm surprised these aren't in bold 100 size font text, but this is pretty cool because they say, from the results of our testing, we have found that Stable Diffusion 3 is equal to or outperforms current state of the art text to image generation systems in all the areas above. And they also give us a little tidbit of what they've been able to achieve even with unoptimized inference tests on consumer hardware with Stable Diffusion 3. So they say here, even with their 8 billion parameter Stable Diffusion 3 model, the entire thing can fit into 24 gigs of VRAM on an RTX 4090. It takes about 34 seconds to generate an image of 1000 by 1000 pixels when using 50 sampling steps. And 50 steps is, for those of you who don't know, that's quite a few steps, which means the quality you'd be getting would easily be as good or better than something coming out of SDXL. And they say additionally, there will be multiple versions of Stable Diffusion 3 during the initial release, ranging from 800 million to 8 billion parameter models, basically to keep pushing down the barrier to entry to actually use these models. And these are avocados with text in the background. And I will say the coolest thing about this is the ability to have a subject in front of this chalkboard and have the model actually understand that, which 
I think it's pretty cool. So the architecture details are pretty interesting. Initially with their announcement, we had no clue how this was actually put together. We knew that they were using this new novel idea of diffusion transformers, but now we have a much better idea of how these are actually put together. They say here, for text to image generation, our model has to take both modalities, text and images into account. This is why we call this new architecture MMDIT, a reference to its ability to process multiple modalities. As in previous versions of stable diffusion, we use pre-trained models to derive suitable text and image representations. Specifically, we use three different text embedders, two clip models, and T5 to encode text representations and improved autoencoding to encode image tokens. So basically understanding what text someone might want and what someone might want as an image as a function of the text they gave the model in the prompt. And what's cool here is now they have a legitimate architecture where you can provide both text embeddings and image embeddings into the same input and have it all happen in one step. So you can see text embeddings and image embeddings here. Uh, these all go into one joint attention. It's former. We see kind of the uh, the loop that happens here in terms of creating a little bit of feedback, which is how a lot of these models tend to work, and then see kind of the output here. And again, so we knew this was based on diffusion transformers, and the stable diffusion 3 architecture builds on top of this. Obviously, since text and image embeddings are conceptually really different, uh, they use two separate sets of weights for these two modalities. And they show below that this is equivalent to having two independent transformers for each modality, and then joining the sequences of them um, back together for the attention operation so that both operations can work in their own space and still have a notion of what's going on with each other. So they kind of have an idea of what the other is doing. And as a result, you just get a much more cohesive output. That's why you really want to leverage two forms of input and then use them uh, in the same attention operation as opposed to doing one and then the other, which is pretty similar to how Stable Diffusion XL worked. So these are basically uh, two graphs of validation loss. So basically showing how these different models uh, and attributes of the model reacted while they were training. Basically showing as training steps improve, the validation loss goes down, which is what you want. And basically, Sibilda AI says that by using this approach, information is allowed to flow between image and text tokens to improve overall comprehension and topography within the outputs generated. This architecture is also easily extendable to multiple modalities such as video, and they talk about this in their paper a bit, but they're still being really, really quiet and really careful about what they reveal about this model. And I'll also say that a model like this will be much better at creating a bunch of different versions and retaining initial prompt attributes compared to other models. Now, another really cool thing that I like that Stability AI is doing is they're expanding on this idea of prompt following. So they say their model has the ability to create images that focus on various different subjects and qualities while also remaining highly flexible with the style of the image itself. So separating subject from attributes and aesthetics of the image is a really cool thing that we've seen people manage to do with Comfy UI and some really complex setups. And the idea that this is now baked into the core logic of a model is really cool. So there are some examples here, like a kangaroo holding a beer with ski goggles, an entire universe inside a bottle, cheeseburger with juicy patties sitting in a chair, dreamlike digital art, bird, a car made of vegetables. So, and again, what's cool is these models really show their prowess when you give them a really simple prompt, uh, just showing what they decide to focus on, how many subjects they create, and this is really cool to see. Now, another thing that they get into in their paper, and they describe it in like an okay way here, is what they call uh, improving rectify flows by reweighting. And pretty much what this means is how you actually handle noise and hiccups in training while you're creating a model. Basically, they say here that by using recti rectified flow formulation, or just RF, this helps straighten inference paths and then allow sampling with fewer steps. So in other words, it makes it a little bit cheaper to train these models, and it helps keep them on track while they're running, so you have less runs you have to throw out entirely. They tested their approach here against 60 other diffusion trajectories, such as LDM, EDM, and ADM using multiple data sets, metrics, and, and sampler settings for each comparison. Uh, they say here that these results indicate that while previous RF formulations show improved performance in few step sampling regimes, the relative performance declines with more steps. And their version consistently per improves performance. So what they're saying here is they can achieve more with less GPU compute and as a result, less money. This gives them a huge leg up in the Gen I space, especially with their direct competitors like Midjourney. And frankly, this is mostly in here for investors, basically saying if you give us money, 
the likelihood we create value from this is more likely with less training spend. And for those of you who've looked at the cap table of any generative AI startup, basically the biggest line item on their expenses is just either buying or renting GPUs, which in the case of Stability AI is entirely renting them from Amazon, even though they're getting kind of a special rate from Jeff Bezos. And what's also cool here is they show how they were able to end up with this massive 8 billion parameter model and be able to actually use it in a reasonable size VRAM. Pretty much, Validation loss doesn't have a lot to do with this, but it gives you a better shot at getting a model that is more compressible and more malleable. So the fact that they're able to do this with more efficiency does demonstrate a strong correlation between the metrics they've shown us, validation loss, and uh, showing that, you know, still this is a big predictor of overall model performance. So if you can train more efficiently and make better guesses to keep your training on path, better performance basically results from all this. And they say pretty much the scaling trend shows no signs of saturation, so they could keep going and basically not run into similar issues that Cloud actually mentioned in their paper. We've gotten a huge boost in performance, so that means the model is better on the high end, and they see no reason that uh, they could continue to improve the performance of the models in the future, which means we're going to see even better results with even less you know, initial uh, draw on the hardware itself. Now, text is an even bigger attribute here, and this is something that Stability AI has been really focused on for quite some time, even in other experimental models. And they made some curious trade-offs. So they started by actually removing a memory-intensive 4.7 billion parameter T5 text encoder, which was previously used during inference in SDXL. Uh, Stable Diffusion 3's memory requirements are significantly lower partially because of this. And what's cool is now with their new um, architecture, removing the text encoder doesn't directly affect the visual aesthetics, only resulting in slightly less good text adherence. And the performance section and their benchmarks clearly show this. So they pretty much show, even when we, even when we pull this out entirely, we still get basically the same performance, and the trade-off when it comes to images is still quite good. And they show it here where they give you a prompt just of some ferrets, and you can show that uh, although they've removed the text encoder entirely, we're getting basically the same results. These monkeys holding sign text is basically the same, if not even a little bit better. So very cool. I did not realize they had removed that entirely. So if you want to read the entire paper, I'll link that below. I think this is one of their more dense papers in terms of just someone going to look at this and getting something out of it. But if you want to learn about QK normalization, some, some information they don't mention in this overview about training at scale, which I think is pretty cool, and a bunch of really interesting things they mention about pre-training and mitigations to kind of help performance, definitely check out this paper. And if there are enough people who request it, I'll even just do a full video on the paper showing you some of the things that I highlighted and that piqued my interest. So are you guys going to use this model? Are you signing up to be a part of the pre-release? What do you think? Is this going to be better than SDXL? Will it actually be better than Midjourney V6? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, as always, I hope you learned something in this video. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share as it helps us out a ton. We're really close to 10,000 subscribers. So I hope this video can push us over 10,000 subscribers. I'm really excited. Uh, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.